Vaccine passports are popping up all over the world. But how exactly does a vaccine passport work? What are the benefits and what are the dangers? Hi, welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. So as you may know, I live in New York City, also known as the Big Apple, the home of Wall Street, and the world's number one source of used confetti. And since I live in New York City, as of March 26th, I am officially allowed to go to a concert if I want to, or a sports event, or maybe even a parade, you know, to boost the confetti economy. It's almost like the lockdown is over. That is, as long as I've tested negative for COVID-19 in the last 72 hours, or that I've been vaccinated against COVID-19. And provided I can prove it. How can I prove it? Why, with my handy dandy Excelsior Pass. It's so easy. All I need to do is download it to my phone and put in tons of personal information. The Excelsior Pass wallet app provides me with a QR code that can be scanned to verify that I'm safe to be around. I can use it to get into Madison Square Garden, the Times Union Center, or even a wedding. And I can rest easy knowing that it has Governor Andrew Cuomo's official seal of approval. Hey, if a COVID policy has Cuomo's seal of approval, I'm on board. The Excelsior Pass is just one example of a new phenomenon many are calling vaccine passports. The idea of having to prove you're vaccinated, though, is not new. Vaccine requirements to attend public school became widespread in the U.S. in the 1960s and 70s. And international travelers might be familiar with the vaccine yellow card, which is often used to prove vaccination against yellow fever. No connection to the name of the card, which happens to be yellow. What is new? is the idea of having the vaccine passport be digital, an app for your smartphone, something you carry with you at all times, even in your own neighborhood. But with economies throughout the world struggling under COVID-19 lockdowns, many see digital vaccine passports as an attractive way to reopen safely. So suddenly, digital vaccine passports are everywhere. They're being developed in Hawaii and in California, as well as the European Union. Britain has plans to test their own vaccine passport. And they're already in use in Iceland, Saudi Arabia, Estonia, and Israel. Some private businesses are also putting vaccination requirements in place for customers or employees. And a travel pass developed by the International Air Transport Association is in use by some airlines. In fact, Airlines for America, the industry trade organization for the leading U.S. airlines, wrote a letter practically begging the Biden administration to find ways to ease restrictions on travel. So it's no surprise that on March 29th, the Biden administration weighed in on the role the federal government will play regarding vaccine passports. What is that role? I'll tell you after the break. Welcome back. Does the Biden administration plan to implement a national vaccine passport? Well, no. According to Press Secretary Jen Psaki, the federal government will provide guidance. More specifically, she said a determination or development of vaccine passport, or whatever you want to call it, will be driven by the private sector. Ours will more be focused on guidelines that can be used as a basis. This is a lot like how the federal government handled the development of electronic health records in 2009 with the High Tech Act. So it's not a new approach. And it avoids any federal mandates that might rub people the wrong way. As Andy Slavitt, senior advisor to the White House on COVID-19, said in a virtual briefing on March 29th, unlike other parts of the world, the government here does not view its role as the place to create a passport, nor a place to hold the data of citizens. We view this as something that the private sector is doing and will do. The goal is to create guidelines so that private sector vaccine passports are secure 
free, accessible, open source, and compatible across the United States and internationally. But that will be difficult. Perhaps very difficult. Imagine having that guy's job. Anyway, there are already at least 17 vaccine passport initiatives underway. That's according to the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology. Each vaccine passport system is unique, not necessarily in a good way. According to Kristen McGovern, a partner at healthcare consultancy Serona Strategies, it would be an almost Herculean task to come up with a single standard for all of those. So a lot of vaccine passports are in the works. But why? What are the benefits of vaccine passports? Well, supporters talk about perks like protecting public health a public sense of security, allowing things to get back to normal more quickly, economic recovery, ease of travel, and a revitalized tourism industry. Others say it will incentivize people to get the vaccine. Donald Rucker, who led the Federal Health IT Office during the Trump years, even noted that using vaccine passports to track vaccinations could help officials monitor long-term side effects. He said, the tracking of vaccinations is not just simply for vaccine passports. The tracking of vaccinations is a broader issue of, we're giving a novel biologic agent to the entire country, more or less. His was a novel viewpoint. But considering the COVID vaccines are still technically experimental, vaccine passports could help track all of the test subjects. That is us. But not everyone supports the idea of vaccine passports. And I'll tell you why after the break. Welcome back. Not everyone supports vaccine passports. In fact, several states already have legislation in the works either banning or limiting them. These include Florida, Missouri, Pennsylvania, Arkansas, and Montana. Earlier this week, Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued an executive order prohibiting vaccine passports. Meanwhile, U.S. Congresswoman from Georgia, Marjorie Taylor Greene, has introduced a federal bill that would ban COVID-19 vaccination mandates and vaccine passports, which is probably not going to pass. But Republican politicians aren't the only ones concerned. Dr. Michael Ryan of the World Health Organization expressed some misgivings, as did the ACLU. What are they worried about? Turns out they're worried about a lot of things. One major concern is privacy, making sure the data entered into the app stays there and doesn't end up in anyone else's hands. Albert Fox Can is the founder and executive director of the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project at the Urban Justice Center, a New York-based civil rights and privacy group. He had this to say about digital vaccine passports. Even if this worked as advertised, it would still create a really chilling implication for privacy going forward. You know, this is creating what could turn into a permanent layer of surveillance infrastructure on the scale of nothing we've seen since 9-11. The idea that you have a government app that can track every place you go, that can tell whether or not you're going to the supermarket, or going to a church, or going to a mosque, or going to any number of other crowded spaces. Commenting on the Excelsior Pass in New York, he also said there just isn't enough information available on how it collects data and protects privacy. He said, I have more detailed technical documentation about the privacy impact of nearly every app on my phone than I do for this health pass. And on top of it, the pass itself is incredibly revealing, disclosing not only people's health status and name, but their date of birth. Jenny Wanger, director of programs at the Linux Foundation, warned that done wrong, vaccine passports could lead to a techno-dystopia. Others are concerned about equity. Most people are not vaccinated, at least not right now. And in the United States and Europe, access to vaccinations is unevenly distributed between communities and people of different ages. Also, not everyone has a smartphone. This has some people, like Israel Butler of the Civil Liberties Union for Europe, worried that the past could end up creating a two-tier society. The concern is, if vaccine passports only allow the vaccinated with smartphones to fully participate in society, that could leave a lot of people behind. It would disproportionately hurt minorities and the poor. 
Functionally, most vaccine passport apps allow users to print the credentials, but that still requires access to a printer and a computer. And if you don't have a smartphone, you might not have access to those either. On the international stage, using vaccine passports to restrict travel could create a vaccinated global elite and a world underclass that cannot travel. Other concerns include protecting against fraud, with fake vaccine passports being sold on the black market. And there are also concerns about protecting basic freedoms, avoiding a 1930s-era dystopia where anyone can demand to see your papers before letting you on a train or into a store. And some experts note that the data on how much COVID-19 vaccines affect transmission is still limited, which is why even with vaccine passports, many venues are still requiring everyone to wear masks. Some of the things people are worried about are already happening in Israel. For example, the Israeli parliament has passed a law allowing the health ministry to disclose information on people who have yet to be vaccinated. Under the policy, names can be released to the ministries of education, labor, social affairs, and social services, as well as local governments, with the purpose of allowing these bodies to encourage people to get vaccinated and health officials recommend barring people who do not have Israel's Green Pass from schools, elder care facilities, and certain medical work. Only vaccinated university students are being allowed to physically return to classes. The Association for Civil Rights in Israel is getting involved and asking for the government to pass legislation protecting workers' rights. But Israel's health minister said getting vaccinated is a moral duty. It is part of our mutual responsibility. Anyone who does not get vaccinated will be left behind. Unsurprisingly, there have been protests about this in Israel. Some protesters equated the green passports with yellow stars and number tattoos, the kind that Nazis implemented for Jews, who incidentally the Nazis viewed as filthy and disease-ridden. Meanwhile, China will be using their own vaccine passport to keep out anyone who did not receive a Chinese-made vaccine. Which is fine because I don't want to go to China anyway. But it's all further evidence that digital vaccine passports could ultimately end up doing more than just letting me into Madison Square Garden. Which is fine because I don't want to go there either. So what do you think? Are digital vaccine passports a good idea? Let me know in the comments. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thank you for watching America Uncovered.